Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Tyler here with the latest Vectric Project of the Month. This is the rocket clock created with the Aspire software for the June 2018 Project of the Month. And of course it's available for free at your Vehico account or through the Cool Stuff links in the uh, Vectric website uh, section. And uh, I wanted to just give an overview of how this was created. I went on the internet and looked for some retro looking funky 1950s style sci-fi rockets and scenes and I found several that you know were candidates for that but nothing quite exactly like I wanted. I found a, a, a rocket scene that um, had this style of rocket but I highly modified it in the uh, Spire software to suit more uh, the size for the clock and the look of the rocket that I wanted. Uh, so I drew all the vectors in the Aspire software and created the components for the rocket uh, from those drawn vectors. Also created this uh, mystery planet from a photo I found of one of Saturn moons called Phoebe. And I simply created a thin component as an overlay to a dome shape. Uh, so I could just put that uh, cratered surface over this dome shape to create this mystery planet. Very easy to do. And I've got this uh, propulsion trail that was created using the two rail sweep uh, with the Aspire software. So it was, uh, consists really of uh, three main components. We've got your planet, the propulsion trail, and the rocket ship itself. Now this is a, a rather small clock. It's a two and a half inch uh, clock insert and uh, put it in the porthole of the rocket. So this would be great to hang on the wall of any aspiring astronauts or space travelers you might know, or maybe you're some of your grandkids or something like that. The uh, rocket can be hung in pretty much any orientation that you uh, prefer. I chose to hang it almost horizontal like this with this rocket taking off from Mystery Planet. But you could uh, place these hangers in any position that you want to make it suitable for whatever angle you want. You can hang it this way or you know, more straight up or whatever you prefer. So I'll leave that up to you where to place those hangers. And as usual, you can download this free project of the month from your VNCO account or visit the we uh, Vectric website and go to the Cool Stuff page where all the other free projects are available as well, not only through your VNCO account. And as usual, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss anything, don't want to miss any of the free projects, please subscribe to our channel. This is Michael Tyler signing off for now, and we'll see you next month.
once you separate the pieces from the board, uh, you want to sand off any fuzzies that might interfere with this glue up of the back panel and the front side of the clock. You could sand off the tabs right now if you wanted to uh, before you glue this together, but generally speaking, I just wait till after everything's glued together and then sand the tabs off all at once and maintain that profile once it's glued up. So I'll just apply some glue to this and uh, we'll glue these two halves together. let this glue tack up just a little bit before I clamp it and just make sure these are aligned well before we clamp it down so we'll tack that clamp it and allow it to dry So I'm in the process of final sanding the glue up of the rocket clock. I've used a variety of uh, tools. I've hand sanded with some coarse grit and then uh, progressing down to fine, finer grit sandpaper. Use this uh, flex shaft with the 3M uh, rotary sanding disc on the end. Still need to do some uh, detail work on that, but that makes it go really quick. I also have a uh, battery operated rotary tool I use for getting into certain tight spots. It helps speed things up for getting the uh, initial blending done on the edges. And then I also like to use this one inch belt sander. I think this is like 50 or 60 bucks on sale and it really comes in handy for sanding the edges of uh, glued up things like the rocket clock we have here. So go ahead and use whatever means necessary that you have to prepare your rocket clock for the application to finish and we'll take it from there. It's a good idea at this stage before you apply your finish that you test fit the clock insert. I just sanded the tabs off on the interior with the spindle sander and this is just a friction fit uh, clock insert and I just push it in there. That it's a good fit. It's uh, nice and snug, it's not too tight, it's not too loose, so just test fit your clock and make any uh, uh, sanding adjustments you need to uh, if necessary. Okay, the final sanding is done, at least uh, final sanding for preparation to put this sealer on the wood. I'm using a mixture of uh, seal coat, Zinser seal coat, 50-50 with denatured alcohol. That makes an excellent wood sealer. So I'll put on a, a coat or two of that and sand between the coats just to get the rest of the fuzzies off. And just brush this on liberally and it'll be soaking into the wood. And after we do that, we'll come back and proceed with the rest of the finish. All right, I put two coats of the seal coat, the thin seal coat on this and uh, sanded it give it a light sanding uh, just to remove any of the stiffened fuzzies and so on. I'm going to apply a, a straight non-thinned coat of uh, the Zincher seal coat to further seal the wood and give me a paint surface. By the way, uh, I've just got a little bit to use up in this, this can here, but this uh, spray shellac, it's under the uh, brand name Zincher Bullseye Spray Shellac. It's exactly the same as Seal Coat. Both of these are clear, de-waxed shellac. So if you prefer to spray the shellac on, if you're using shellac, then this is exactly the same as the Seal Coat. I'm just gonna brush this on because I've got some uh, leftovers in this can and get, try to get rid of this. So I'll go ahead and, and put a coat of this on and let it dry. And then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you what I have in mind for finishing this rocket clock. Now you could, if you want to, uh, use your own plans. If you just want to stain this and uh, give it a clear coat, then you can, of course. But I've got different plans for this uh, sample project on my own. 
So I'll come back with you after I finish coating this and letting it dry. The final coat of uh, full strength seal coat is dry and I've just lightly sanded it with uh, some 320 grit. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and paint this with a number of water-based paints. I picked out uh, a silver metallic for the body of the rocket. And I think I'll go with a uh, red for the fins and some yellow and orange for the flames and the propulsion trail. And a little bit of red, maybe some blue. Uh, the planet, I'm deciding whether to go with a purple color or a green color. Anyway, I'll put on these, these base coats and then we'll let that dry and then I'll come back and show you the rest of the finished process. Now that the paint's all dry on the rocket, I'm ready to apply a, a few thin coats of clear just to seal this uh, paint for the next step of the finishing process. So I'll just give a few light coats of some clear Krylon. I've already done the bottom of the underside. And I'll just apply a few coats and we'll proceed with the rest of the finishing process after we get back. Okay, with the uh, sealed uh, paint with the thin coats of uh, Krylon, I'm ready to apply a glaze. I'm just going to use some regular acrylic water-based black paint. And I got two brushes here. One's just a brand new brush that I'll use to brush on the thin black glaze. And then I've got an old brush that I've used before that uh, I just wiped off. It's used for dry brushing in case I need it. And then I, I've got some rags I'll wipe off. And it's kind of an iterative process. You just kind of go along until it looks good. So we'll just uh, go ahead and get started here. Got some clean water and I'll just dilute this black paint. And just brush this on. It looks like it's a little thick. I'll just thin it down a little bit. You have to work kind of quick because it dries. It's acrylic paint, it dries kind of fast. I'll just do this little section just to show you the process and then I'll continue on and come back and show you the finished item. So I've got that black glaze on and I'm just wiping it off to expose the color and enhance some of the 
details. Now you can wet uh, the rag, dampen it a little bit if you want to wipe off more of the paint if not enough's coming off for you. Again, it just uh, just keep going until it looks good to you. I'll just dampen a little bit of a paper towel here. I want to brighten up that those silver areas. So just moisten that, wiping off. Maybe do a little dry brushing. Okay, so you get an idea of the technique and I'll come back and show you the finished rocket after we're all done glazing it. All right, I finished uh, applying the glaze and selectively wiping it off. Gives it that nice old vintage patina look to it. You notice I kind of shaded around the mystery planet here just to give it more of a sense of roundness and a, a light direction coming from this direction here, leaving a little bit of a shadow. And I just did that by, you know, wiping it off less right there. But I, it, the glaze leaves enough in the recesses so that it shows up the detail really, really well. So once this glaze is good and dry, then I'll finish it with a few light coats of uh, clear, probably clear satin, uh, maybe even a, a clear flat, I'm not sure yet. So we'll let that dry and then I'll apply the final clear coats.